Shalom, Israel. It's your boy, New Breed, also known as Brother Emmanuel, coming back with yet another topic. That's right, another topic. Today's topic is the history of sports. And are they fake? Are they phony? Are they rigged? That's right. Now this video is actually in response to a comment that a subscriber made in a prior video some time back. Just getting to your answer. This person wanted to know about sports. Wanted to know about sports. This particular subscriber actually is a person who was really in the sports or was really in the sports, played sports in the past and wanted to know are sports even real? Are they rigged? Are they fake? Are they just a big distraction? And I'm here to answer your question today. All right. So my videos tend to be very controversial to some, even entertaining to others. But in actuality, my videos are nothing less than education. I'm here to educate. So as I talk about sports, I'm gonna give you a brief history lesson on sports. Cause I like to start at the beginning because knowing the past is a really good way to understand the future and understand what's currently happening. So let's talk about it. I'm gonna take you way, way, way back. I'm talking biblical times. Now, every culture known to man has had their own level of sports or activities and had their own different sports. Every culture has. It. So we're going to be primarily focusing on the Hebrew Israelites. Why? Because the Hebrew Israelites actually serve captivity in each and every culture. So that's who we'll be focusing on. So because these particular people were forced to learn every sport. Why? Because they were being used as entertainment by their captors. Makes sense, right? All right. Now let's get into this history lesson. So they were captors and, you know, their captors used them as pretty much entertainment. I can actually take you to the Bible. You can go to Maccabees or we can take you to the book of Daniel and Daniel and the lion's den. There was always Greeks and Romans or people of Grecian descent or whatever you want to call them. Esau, Edomites. They actually made the Hebrews fight and lion's dens made them fight in domes. I'm talking about huge domes. And they would make them fight huge animals. They would make them fight lions, tigers, bears. It was serious. So the history of sports were very barbaric. And as you can see, these same people who learn every sport in every powerful nation, they excelled in these sports. In fact, currently, they dominate these sports. Look at the NBA, NFL, even golf, tennis, every sport. But let's get back to my history lesson. They were pretty much very barbaric. You know, they would have to fight these animals to the death. And sometimes these powerful, mighty men and warriors, they actually won. You know, they actually got in domes and beat lions and beat bears and beat tigers. And you know who these people are. I don't need to race bait, do I? Because you already got the point. But anyways, now if y'all race sensitive, then you might as well get the fuck off my page because I speak about social issues and race is part of society. So if you're very sensitive, you then get the fuck off. What more can I say? Anyway, back to my history lesson. As the centuries dwell, as time passed, people got, you know, basically they realized that, damn, all our good athletes are dying. 
we got to keep them alive because we're making more money if they stay alive a little bit longer. At least so we can get our dollars worth off of these guys. Let's get our dollars worth. So in slavery times, you had Democrats and Republicans. They would have boxing matches. You had, you know, Democrats on the blue side in the blue corner. You had Republicans on the red side and in the red corner. And they would have fighters that were slaves. And they would make these guys fight to the bloody death. Literally, they would fight to death. They would feed them large amounts of whiskey and make them fight to the death. And whoever won, won large sums of money. So we're still in the barbaric stage, but we're around slavery time. So they start to polish things. You know, people wanted their hands in the pot. More and more people wanted their hands on these fighters. They wanted to be able to make a dollar off of them. So got to keep them alive a little bit longer, at least so we can make a dollar off of them. We want to put our families through school. We want to be able to pay these mortgages. We got to make sure this fighter at least stays alive for a few more years. So then boxing got a little bit more polished. And what you have, what you have now is, I mean, what you had then in those times where they were making fighters fight about 35 rounds. So they weren't beating each other to death, but they was beating each other damn near to death. And uh, that's how it went. And eventually fighters were still dying off just a little bit too early because 35, you have 50, 60 fights, 35 rounds. You're not going to last real long enough to make enough money. So as society progressed, as things start moving along, they start polishing everything. Even the NFL at one time, they had soft helmets that were made out of leather and they were actually tackling using their heads. They were banging heads on a field. It was very barbaric to say the least, but too many concussions. Great athletes just wasn't lasting long enough. It wasn't filling enough pockets. Are you beginning to see a pattern here? It is all about money. As sports got more lucrative, they become they became more polished. So let's speed it up as we go into now, you know, our current current times. So now and the NFL, you know, they got hard helmets. They're real strict on concussion laws. You know, you had that Will Smith movie concussion come out. That joint broke a whole lot of barriers. And now people are very protective over the, you know, headgear and all these different studies. Is it really that they care about these athletes that have been held captive since centuries ago? Is if they really care about these athletes or is it becoming more lucrative? And um, even in the NBA, at one point in time, even in the early 90s, players were a lot tougher than they are now. It wasn't no flopping. It wasn't calling foul because you touched somebody's shoestrings. It wasn't a foul for, you know, not touching anybody. It was no flopping. It was none of that back then. Not in the early 90s. These players actually played all 72 games, played every playoff game. And now players are hollering about some rest. And the NBA is starting to take heed to some of it, trying to take heed to scheduling. You got players who are getting paid to show up on the court in different cities. And they're like, hey, we tired. We ain't showing up. You know, we're going to get off the court. Even though you got paying fans paying for tickets to see particular players, these guys are not even playing in some of the games. So you got that going on in the NBA now. And the NBA is just a complete mess at this moment, in my opinion. But we'll talk about that. We'll get to that. And then when it comes to boxing, now you got 12 rounds. And for most of the 12 rounds, it's pretty much, you know, shuffling and defense which is good to me in my opinion because boxing is one of those sports that the only sport that has no type of protection 
Like you got protection, concussion protection in the NFL, NBA, if something happened, there's different insurance policies, so on and so forth. But it ain't no help or no protection for a boxer. So I think it's good that they don't have to, you know, fight 30 rounds and 25 rounds. So as things become more polished in sports, as things become more polished and they keep making the game better, so to speak, quote unquote, better in their opinion, but really it's becoming more lucrative. So now you got more and more and more hands in the pot, more and more people are being paid, more and more children are getting put through college off the backs of these athletes. So now it's in their best interest to just sugarcoat and polish the games all together. As you look at the NBA, you can clearly see that it's fixes, they're rigged, it's people, it's referees calling fouls that are not happening. It's all kind of things happening on the court that's clearly travesties to any paying customer going to their games. I mean, you can clearly see what's going on. It's a, it's definitely a fix. And to prove it's all about the money and how much, how much substance they're bringing in. If you pay attention, the NBA has over 30 something teams, but only like the same six or seven teams are winning NBA finals. Ask yourself why that is. It's pretty much because those particular states make the most money. They're, they're big, uh, those are the empire states. Those are the states that are bringing in the money. They buying the most, selling the most merchandise and it is what it is. Even looking at this NBA Finals, you can clearly see anybody with two eyes, the Milwaukee Bucks, believe it or not, were pretty much one of the best teams in the, in the playoffs. They're better than Cleveland. Cleveland, in my opinion, is the worst team to ever win an NBA Finals. But they got LeBron James. You know, LeBron James sells a whole lot of jerseys. They make a whole lot of money off Bron Bron. So it is what it is. You're pretty much better off watching WWE wrestling, to be honest with you, because at least you get a storyline, a better storyline with wrestling. So if you want to watch sports for entertainment purposes, then hey, it's cool sometimes to watch it just to guess the, the storyline that they're going to come up with. You know, that's my reason for watching it time from time. But, you know, I don't really do that too much. Just time from time, basically. But, um, I mean, you know what's a fix in the NBA. Think about it. You got, guess who has the next draft picks next year? The first, the first two picks. You got Boston and Los Angeles get the first and second pick. Get the hell out of here. How the hell they get the first and second pick? Think about that. If that ain't the fix, what is? These same teams won the finals several times and they're going to get the first picks. Come on, man. Y'all see what it is. They just, the states that make the biggest money, that's who make it. And when nobody going to no NBA finals with the Milwaukee Bucks playing, those were the emptiest playoff stands I've seen this season. But anyway, the NFL. If y'all can't see the the fix in that in the last well, I don't know if it was last year's Super Bowl because I didn't really fell off on the, in the NFL no it was two seasons ago when Cam Newton and um and Peyton Manning was going against each other if y'all couldn't see that Broncos was going to win because every time it's a quarterback who's about to retire who's had a prestigious career they always make them win before they leave it's just uh, you know storybook stuff man it is what it is you know, boxing. There's so much money and hands in the pot. These brothers, even, you know, you got, and you've seen brothers take flops in boxing as well. I mean, you know, when it comes to money and as lucrative as this, the sports become, the more money, the more time, you know, I mean, the more uh, fixing goes on. So that's my answer to you, brother. You wanted to know what I thought about sports. There's the rundown. If you want to watch it just for entertainment purposes, to guess the storyline, then hey, do your thing. But just know, 
that the sports stuff is rigged. There's a lot goes on in that. And you're not really seeing anything that's fair happening. It's all about what makes the most money. And it's a lot of people up top who calling the shots. And it just is what it is. Message for all my subscribers. I'd like to thank y'all for watching these videos. Turn your notification button on. That's that little bell over there in your right corner. Turn that on. So you can get these videos as they're being uploaded. And you can expect plenty more coming of these educational videos. These videos are for the critical thinkers and critical thinkers only. This ain't for the weak or the faint of the heart. I enjoy speaking with y'all today. Shalom and peace.